Hello everyone and um, welcome to this webinar on the join unjoin geometry tool inside of the Greatech Power Pack for Revit. Um, for those of you that um, don't know me, um, my name is Simon Dickinson. I'm the BIM Technical Manager for Greatech here in the UK. Um, I've been with Greatech now for, for 19 years and I've been an advocate of BIM for at least the last 18 years. I'm an Autodesk Certified Professional and also I'm an Autodesk Certified Instructor. Um, I've been an instructor now um, for the past um, um, 19 years that I've, I've been with Greatech. Okay, so um, for those of you that don't know who we are, um, we are 30 plus years old now. Um, our head office is in um, Paris. Um, we've got um, offices in over 11 countries um, around the world. Um, and the number of offices, it's, we've got over 48 now and constantly growing as well. Um, you know, we, 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 we're a healthy, profitable, growing company, but good investors and we're constantly um, expanding um, the business in, in all areas. And I'll come on to our four pillars um, in a second. We've got over 550 staff um, and the majority of our staff are technical. Um, 100 of them are actually dedicated um, programmers in our R&D center in Romania. And that's where we basically program our solutions, including um, the power pack um, that we're showing today. We're always interested in people's ideas as well regarding um, possible improvements, possible enhancements, new tools, new features um, that you would like to see in the power pack. So please do drop me an email if you've got any ideas as to things that you think um, the power pack would benefit from. We're very much um, customer centric. You know, you guys um, come first um, in our eyes. Um, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. Um, and we do have some very good feedback on all the different courses that we've run. Okay. So we run three and a half thousand plus training courses every year. We'd like to split our business down into what we call our four pillars. So the create, simulate, fabricate, and manage. So from a create point of view, you know, um, using the Autodesk products to develop um, our solutions uh, and our ideas, um, but also enhance that um, with the Great Tech Power Packs. So that's why the Power Packs um, were developed. It was to take um, what is already a great product in Revit, but add features in there, so new features, things that currently Revit can't do, um, and also tools to help streamline things that Revit does already, but could do better. In particular, the um, the focus of this webinar being on the join and join geometry, it enhances what Revit can already do. We have our simulate products. Um, in particular, we've got a product called Advanced Design. Advanced Design is a structural analysis package with bi-directional links between Revit and the analysis platform. From a Fabricate point of view, we've got a product called Advanced Workshop. Um, this is a fabrication tool where we can take our um, products to the shop floor and get them fabricated, um, offsite manufacturing. And then we have our managed products, in particular, a product called OpenTree, which is our document management tool um, that's got various different links to pretty much every external CDE from BIM 360 to SharePoint, wherever you're using, we've got workflows um, to, to manage your document workflows through there as well. Okay, so the join unjoin tool, okay, so it's sits there um, on the modeling bar inside of a power pack. Okay, um, home dedicated icon. And basically when we click that icon, it will launch um, our join unjoin dialog box. Okay, so this is where this is where we could decide how we want to join or unjoin um, geometry. Now this is quite nice because what you've got the ability to do here is we can look at this from a project wide, so, you know, we don't have to be in a particular view or we could be looking at just the active view. So elements that are visible within the view at that moment in time. We also have the ability to create selections. So what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to join 
geometry. Um, so floors to walls, walls to roofs, walls to floors. You know, all the stuff that we normally do when, you know, you do the attached top base on your walls. You know, we all know that sometimes we might draw wall in, you then might draw floor in afterwards, or you might then put the floor in, you use the tools to, to, to correct the geometry, but then you add additional walls in. And as you know, if you're an experienced Revit user, then walls are then not connected correctly to the floors, etc. And it might be that you've got a particular floor construction that's got a makeup that's got the finishes on um, and by default the the wall sits on top of that finish so you know you might have a laminate flooring and it's going to sit actually on top of that and we need it to make it change all of that is usually controlled through your layers um, within your um, basic in your um, hosted geometry so your floors walls ceilings and roofs in the way that them them layers are actually set up and what we can do in here as i say we can choose what we want to do so as you can see there it says do we want to join we can change that to unjoin we then select the two categories that we're interested in as we start to build that up it will start to give us some information about the intersections that revit is finding that, that the power pack is finding within there so here you can see we've got walls and floors there's 143 intersections in this particular search and 143 of them are not joined okay so we can start to get some nice feedback in here on basically which elements are actually working which elements aren't and we can make we can put as many different selections in here as we want so there i've got the roofs and the walls you know we could change it the other way around it can be walls and roofs so we can control the primary join as well and what makes this even smarter is we can basically create configurations so if for instance you always want to run a test for your walls and your floors rather than having to set this up all the time we can actually create um, a configuration for that it could be all joinable elements you could just have all them different settings that you saw on the previous screen actually set up in there now at the beginning i mentioned um, that the power pack for revit gives us tools that are uh, totally unique to the power pack you know they, they're, they're adding additional functionality and some of the tools as i mentioned with regards to like the join and join geometry tool helps to add productivity gains into this into in, into revit now we always talk about you know productivity gains and sometimes it's not measurable um, but what i'd like to do is let's show you a little video and this is the number of clicks so basically in this little video this is actually going to show you the manual way to join things using the join geometry tool and then the power pack okay so we're going to run these side by side and what we should be able to see is you'll actually be able to see in here go into the same views we can zoom in and you can start to see where the geometry is not quite working correctly so the revit tool we use the, the join geometry and then we start to go through and we start to do the clicks so we find where these walls are not correctly joined and we can go through and we can start to fix that we can join the, the ends of the walls to the floors and we're going through and you can see there we're already the, the timers are running the same um in revit we're already up to 28 clicks to solve this issue and we're still only at 13 clicks on the power pack side so basically we've set the power pack up to to do what we need selected all the walls and floors click to okay we just need to sit back have a drink and see what's going on yeah and, and let finish the process we can now go in and we can just have a look in there and see what's see if it's worked so in 13 clicks whilst we waited for it to obviously update 52 seconds and here we go let's fast forward it on the, the revit side um, so there we go two minutes to do it manually Okay, and that was just on that one view. So, you know, these massive um, productivity gains um, by using this tool. It's one of them that really is, it's, a, it's going to save a lot of time um, when it comes to fixing the geometry inside of your model. Okay, so what we'll do now is let's go across into Revit and I shall show you how it all works. Okay. 
So here we have our model, okay? And what I'm gonna do is let's just um, go to a section, okay, into here, okay? Not that one, let me go to the correct section. That was the correct section, yeah. So in here, as you can see, this is actually all joined. And it's all joined because I forgot to unjoin it. Not a problem, what we can do is let's use the tool in reverse. Because at the end of the day, this tool is called join, unjoin, okay? So I'm gonna come in. Here's the, the, the dialog box that was mentioned in before. And what I'm gonna do in here is I'm going to add a new rule and I'm going to unjoin all the walls from all the floors, okay? 195, there's a couple that are, are not joined anyway in this particular view, but I'll just do that and I'm gonna click okay. So let's reverse the process. So as I say, it's not just about joining, it can be unjoined as well. And you can see that was very, very fast. And now we can actually see that, you know, this wall is now sat directly on top of this floor. This floor's got a parquet floor finish. And of course, if I was using this now inside of um, Revit, I could use my join, yeah. And I could select the floor and the wall. Give it a second, and there we go. So this is now where it becomes a very manual process. And there's a good chance as well that I might miss some of these because this is now making sure that I actually see the problem in the first place. If I don't see the problem, I'm not going to fix it. Okay. Obviously, this is going to have massive consequences on quantification, you know, the height of the wall, the amount of material that's in there, the amount of parquet flooring. So if you're doing quantity takeoff, um, we're going to get errors in that information. So let's just undo that and take that back. So let's go back into my join, unjoin tool. Okay. And then what I can do is, and this is where it gets quite smart, is if I come into here, here's some I've made earlier. But what we can do is we can create a new configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. I'm going to create a new configuration. And let's just call this um, join walls and floors. Click OK. Change the configuration now to join walls and floors. Yeah, it's a brand new one, so it's taking into account what I've got in here, and I can then say, right, I want to do a join. Okay. And it will remember the settings for that. So if I change this now to say um, columns and floors, there we go, join columns with floors. Okay. Um, maybe I want to do the walls and floors one again. So it's in there. And obviously if I go back to my join walls and floors, this is how it's set up, okay? And it's scanned through and it says, right, number of intersections, 195. Number not joined, yeah, currently 195. The other thing we can do as well with these configurations, which is quite nice, is I can export them. So if you've set this up on your machine, you can export this out, maybe into a shared location. And then anyone else that needs to use this tool, rather than them having to recreate that configuration, they can simply do an import from file. And we can then re-import that into a different version or into a different setup of Revit on, on a different machine. So it's a really, really powerful feature um, to be able to do that, okay? So here we go. Let's um, change that back to the, you see now it's gone back to the default, which was where I did the unjoin. So that just remembers the last settings that you had in this. Let's go back to the join. There we go. Okay. And as I say, we can add multiple rules into one configuration. It doesn't just have to be join walls and floors. I can do the walls, walls and roofs at the same time as well. And as soon as we start to add the elements in here, so if I did walls and roofs, okay, there we go. Three, three of which are not joined. So it's starting to do this calculation and seeing how many elements it's got in the background. So let's just remove them for the time being and click OK. And as I say, it will now process that. Depending on how many different elements we've actually got to join just depends on how long it actually takes to run this command. OK, and as you saw before, it, 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 based on your machine speed, um, the one that we, we did in the example video took a little bit longer in the same model, but we've now got all of these elements correctly joined and the correct um, areas are now taken into account with that as well. So, 
you know it, it's a really nice easy quick tool to use you know and um, where we've got elements here look where you know we've got a the roof there and we've got you know clearly disconnected from there then we can simply go back in let's change the default one and we'll do join walls and roofs okay notice i'm doing it by the active view so i've got a different number to the last view because i was in a, the, the section zero slightly different view obviously i could just do the entire project and i know that it's going to find all of the issues click ok and it will do the same and there we go we've now got the, them joining as well so you know various different features if you've got columns that are intersecting and various different things that are sort of in the wrong place we're going to better fix that you can see here that this wall clearly does not attach to that um, floor so again let's have a look does it is it going up there let's do the joint on join again let's change that to join my walls and floors okay there we go so it's found the ones 143 with 103 that have not been done notice we've got um ones here that have been joined inversely as well so this is looking at the ones that are potentially joined the wrong way around yeah where we've got floors joined to walls okay so we can click okay again it's going to go through do the same thing and attach all of them walls correctly okay so as i say it's just one of these nice productivity tools that we've added into here that's just going to speed up the the general day-to-day -day jobs of joining things the fact that it's automatically looking at all the walls that are touching or assigned to floors uh, and looking at them it's going to find the the problems that we might miss okay and it's really going to help to tidy up that drawing and as i say if, you know if, if i went to the the either the, did it from the 3d view so obviously i've been doing it from the sections okay you notice it was thinking about it then because what it's doing here is it's now looking at the the views that have not yet been joined and we can click ok and it will find them and it will fix any of the other issues that we had in there as well okay so one of the things you might have just missed then is that wall wasn't actually joining we didn't we had one of them invisible lines that we get in revit where we get geometry inside of geometry i've just run it there now and that has actually fixed that really nice simple little tool very very easy to use and incredibly quick so rather than me spending hours trying to check the geometry multiple sections you know even sometimes you might miss something i know that that tool is going to find that intersecting geometry and it's going to fix it very very quickly so a nice easy one um for this webinar um i hope that's been useful if anyone's got any questions um feel free to um pop it into the chat window now i'll give you a couple of seconds just to do that um just in case anyone has got any burning questions that they'd, they'd like to to ask me um whilst you're doing that if anyone is doing that just to let you know that you can follow us on twitter linkedin um, and on our facebook page we have a, a youtube channel as well so do have a look on there um, where we have lots of other information on some of the amazing tools that we've got inside the power pack so thank you very much um, i hope you have um, a good rest of your day and i look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Bye for now. Great Tech.